finally final. What did y'all find? The, one of the first things that we looked at, um, we talked about that foundation. And uh, so here's one of the issues. It, it says for unvented crawl spaces, six mil pile of sheeting is installed, overlapped, and extending up foundation walls at least six inches. So what holds it up there? If it's flopped back over, is it acceptable? So I put it back up, I put it up against the wall, that lays back, is that acceptable? Because it's not sitting up there six inches. The question was, what have I got in my bag of tricks to help that builder comply when I tell them, no, I can't do that because it's only up two, you got to get it to go up six and stay there. Uh, how do they do that? So some best practices, um, looking for, for, for ideas there. On the, uh, if we completed the envelope tightness, if completed, the envelope tightness test results on the compliance label must meet the 2009 IEC, uh, CC compliance levels. So that would be if they took the alternate compliance path. How are we going to know going down on final which compliance path they took? And that's it. I mean, you know, we're not going right. to really know if they're doing an alternate method or not. And, and that's the that. point. But if they don't, okay, so what do you do? I'm a builder. And I've done, let's say I'm building the Energy Star 3s. So I've had to go through all of this. I've had to run these tests in order to get my Energy Star 3 ready. Mm -hmm. I have all that documentation, but you're expecting to see something right here on this wall that's not there. Um, this is a list, and I'm not saying that it's nothing, but, you know, it's a lot smaller than half this book. So there are changes in the code, and there are changes that we need to talk about. Um, but what's nice is we don't have the whole code to talk about. We can narrow it down to some things that are of real importance for us to get to at this point. So with that said, I'll make sure that we hit these items um, over the next period of time that we have together. Let's get into the specific changes now. We're going to talk about, um, this is one of the outputs that can come out of a manual D, which is an actual duct design. So where the ducts are going to be laid out, um, any sort of connection points, that type of stuff. In addition, it'll get a, you'll get a list um, of like duct sizes, um, uh, CFM that's supposed to be coming into each room, that type of stuff. So those are certain documents that you may get out of a manual D or something like that. <laughs> How much air would a duct 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 leak leak if a duct system could in fact leak? So how much? It can leak a lot. So, <laughs> so with that said, um, ducts need to be sealed. Regardless of or not, if they're going to be tested, they need to be sealed. And this is how the code describes it. So, so if you have a bout of insomnia, pull out the 2009 IACC plus Arkansas amendments. Um, it'll be a great thing to push you to sleep. So I'm going to summarize this for you. Is mastic required? Yes. How thick should the mastic be installed? According to code, 0 0.08 inches thick. Um, that's about the thickness of a nickel. So when you're going through and you're looking, just look for about that sort of thickness. That's what you should see on all joints and seams. And also have you on top of the paper that's listed, it's listed for that. Yeah, it, it must meet the, the listed, the, the UL 181A or 181B, um, depending on, I think depending on um, whether you're using, um, what type of duct you're using. And just a quick question, what do you guys mostly see as far as ducts go? Do you see flex? Do you see rigid? Do you see duct board? Rigid. We're limited on our flex it runs to six foot. Oh. So we have an amendment that will not let them run flex greater than six foot. And they can only do it on branches. And they still have to use mechanical fittings if they're going to turn and drop down. And they cannot use fiber duct board for planters. So basically everyone's using metal ducts. Wow. That is completely different than most of the rest of the southeast. Brag on us when you get a chance. <laughs> that's not necessarily true in northeast Arkansas. Well, that's just, that's a lot of flex up there. 
do they? Okay, so it kind of depends on where you're at in the state. Code states one thing, actual practice may be slightly different sometimes. I, I'm totally fine with tape as long as it's installed properly according to the instructions, which if you read some of the instructions, um, maybe not so much with mastic tape, but with other types of tape, it's like clean off the surface, um, make sure it's dust free, all that type of stuff, make sure it's sealed properly on, um, which let's think about a construction site. That's not often the case there. So that's why I like mastic because you can just sort of slap it on. Um, in certain cases, like the air handler unit, um, this really is only about ducts. So this is not talking about the air handler unit. So with the air handler unit, um, you know, we're, we're talking about tape at that point. So, and will ducts be tested? It's a choice for the builder to make. It's a choice for the jurisdiction to make. Um, as of right now, um, it's an option, but it doesn't have to happen. So that's where we're at right now. Um, and they want me to stop talking at this point. <laughs> you done good. I was like, <laughs>